Hi there, Scott Hamilton, Rockfile, back with another podcast review for your ears. Going to be revisiting 2021's Black Widow on 4K Blu-ray. After recently watching The Eternals for a second time and liking it better the second time, I thought, well, you know, how about Black Widow? Maybe this one will fare better the second time. Um... Short version, it did. This movie actually works for me almost 80 to 90 percent. It's sitting at 79 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. It made almost 400 million dollars. Um, you know, it's no slouch by the stretch of the imagination, not the biggest uh Marvel movie. But we may touch on a few spoilers since this is a revisit here. But I rewatched it tonight, uh, for lack of a better, I just wanted something you know. I didn't have to pay that much attention to, and I wound up paying more attention to it this time than the first time and caught things I didn't catch the first time. If there is a fatal flaw to the movie, and I I looked up the director this time because I didn't the last time. She is an Australian director who did some award-winning films, just a handful of things, nothing major, and they gave her a $200 million budgeted film. She'd done a few TV shows, like three movies, hadn't heard of any of them and she hasn't done anything since i don't know marvel must have known i mean looking at it well you can look at chloe who directed eternals she just won the academy award for a a film and she's a a multi-award winning film in china a filmmaker in china um this woman kate had not done a whole lot and they gave her a budget of 200 million dollars anyway if there's a fatal flaw to the movie it's that part in the middle when they go to mom's house when they finally get the band back together most marvel movies most action movies will spread out scenes like that and up until that point and after that point in the movie they indisperse the the heavily dramatic and the talky points with the action scenes um, and it was flowing very well until we got that. And then we, then we get to mom's house. Then we have a nice dinner scene. I'm like, okay, this is working. It kind of slowed down for the dinner scene, but you know they'll get right back to it. No, then we got to have a scene with two of them. Okay, and then it wasn't bad enough to have one slow scene, two slow scenes. Then we have to have a scene with the other two, and then we can get back to the action. It really, it feels like a half an hour in the middle of a two hour and 10 minute. I know it's not that long, but it just feels like somebody hit the brakes and let's just stay in this house for a while. You know, <laughs> I think the writers could have spread out those scenes to, to make those character beats, those moments with the family, maybe spread them out a little bit. That's if there's a fatal flaw to the movie, but otherwise it's not a bad Marvel flick. When I watched it the first time, I said that it it would have played better had it come out a few years ago, back when it was timely, first of all. The things that are going on in it, you know, go back to Civil War and and Winter Soldier stuff. Um, Pre-Thanos stuff. And had the movie come out then, I think people would like it a whole lot better. Then it kind of comes out after, and it really is kind of a separate thing. And then at the end, you have a little tag that brings it around to the fact that we know she's she passed away in Endgame. And, you know, what are we going to do going forward? Now, another reason why the movie played better to me tonight, it plays like the intro to Yelena, that character. She's great. Florence Pugh is great in the role. You would not even imagine this is the same woman that was in Midsummer. She's that good an actress. Um And watching it now, after watching Hawkeye, this leads to Hawkeye. The scene at the end leads to that show. And they flesh out the character more there than they did here, although they do a lot to kind of set the character. But they flesh her out more in Hawkeye. And she really now has become a fan favorite. So if you rewatch Black Widow that way, knowing that it is, yes, a last hurrah for Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow, unless they come up with something interesting going forward to bring her back, maybe another 
story in the past. Um, it's the introduction of Yelena's character, and you get to to meet her and see her do a lot of things, and they hang out a lot. There, when I was talking about indispersing the the talky scenes with the action scenes, they do it very well in the earlier parts of the movie, where Yelena and and Natasha are in a car and they will be sparring back and forth with words and that kind of thing. Um, we get a lot of character beats and character dynamics in those scenes while the action's going on. And the, the action in the movie is actually quite elevated. It's, it's quite well done. Um, watching it this time on 4K, by the way, I had rented a Blu-ray from Redbox because I had somehow missed this in the theater. Um, I wasn't streaming anything because I didn't have internet at my house yet. And so when I first got to Alaska, this is one of the movies that I rented because I really needed to see it, right? Before I, before I went forward with some of the other things that were out. And I'm glad I did before Hawkeye came out. So I was able to you know, I have the entire MCU collection in Steelbook. I was able to find the 4K Steelbook and got one. So it's been sitting there. And I'm like, hmm. Because when I think back to the movie, I think more about, um, you know, the family dynamics and the scene at the table and, and the funny stuff. And I didn't really – funny how much of the action I had forgotten. So this is another Marvel movie that plays better the second time. The action was great. Some of the car chase scenes are some of the best they've ever done. There's some surprises in it that you don't see coming. Again, some of the best stuff Marvel has done. Kind of wish this had come out a few years ago and we get more of this. This uh, It's almost Mission Impossible. Yes, we go to Marvel extremes towards the end. They really go over the top with some of the aerial combat stuff. Um but it's extremely well done. The effects look good. So talking about the 4K over the, the Blu-ray, the sound. The Blu-ray was in 5.1 or 7.1, whatever you have. Um, and it sounded good. I remember liking it. But Atmos takes it to a whole other level. There's a whole lot of overhead effects. There's a lot of directionality. There's more somebody's firing from a sniper above and behind your left shoulder and then the camera pans around and you see it but you first heard it where it is and it, that kind of stuff i mean people are still calling surround sound kind of a novelty but now that we're into object based surround sound where they can literally put something right over your shoulder in the in your audio space it tricks your ear into thinking it anyway you feel like you're there. It puts you in the scene, you know, and I, and I really felt that, wow, that, that shot came, you know, past my ear and that kind of thing. It was more than any other. I've, I've had surround sound since there's been surround sound at home. I used to have a, when DVDs first came out, I had a PC with a DVD drive in it and I ran an optical cable from that DVD drive into a stereo system that at the time was running Dolby Pro Logic, which was a, a 2.1 and then a, a two, a four, I don't know. It was all fake kind of surround sound, but it was really cool at the time. And then we got into 5.1 and, and, and now we're into Dolby Atmos and DTS X object based stuff. So the sound is definitely an upgrade from the Blu-ray as we have moved on to 4k video wise on blu-ray.com. I found two instances listing the movie. One is upscaled and one is native 4k. I almost put my nose on my TV screen. It looks native. There, It's digitally filmed, so there's no film grain. Um, super detailed up close, whether it's, you know, the Red Guardian's beard or the freckles or pores or stray hairs from the ladies. It, it A lot of detail. And Dolby Vision popped up, so the HDR was on and made a huge difference. I remember watching the Blu-ray thinking, it's just kind of a dull-looking movie. No, that's what it looks like without HDR. With HDR, everything from neon signs to lights. There's a scene towards the beginning where uh, the camera's panning through kind of a forest and the sunlight is, is coming through the trees. And it was so bright, you squinted. Uh, really amped up the nits, if you will, on my HDR, the brightness. It was it was quite bright, quite quite nice. And those are the kind of things you see with a nice HDR job. A movie doesn't look like neon colors from beginning to end. It looks like you're really there. And colors are very accurate. I noticed the Marvel Studios logo at the beginning, just very strong, solid red instead of kind of a, I don't know, a shimmery or, or digital looking red. It's, it's HDR gave it a really solid 
feel. If if I don't, I don't know. If you have a 4K TV with HDR, you know what I'm talking about. Everything is just more refined. It's tighter. It's it's hard to describe. It appears to be a native 4K transfer, like um, Eternals. I hope more of Marvel's movies are finished at 4K and, and transferred at 4K. That's great. Um, and as such, it's a really good picture. There's some soft shots, but there's a lot of movement. Like when the girls are talking, Elena tends to move her head around a lot. Um, so the camera has a hard time focusing on her sitting still a lot of times, where Scarlett Johansson tends to play a more subdued character, and, and there's more still shots to get a lot of detail on her face. But uh, especially in outdoor scenes, it, it definitely looks like a 4K transfer. So all in all, watching Black Widow again was surprisingly better than my first time through i would say that we need to trim out that middle part and maybe find another place for two of those scenes and spread them out a little more as it is if i watch it the next time i'll probably just skip over that from the uh from the dinner scene to the two separate scenes with the mom and the dad and, and then the movie is just uh, it's a fine marvel movie it, it it has connective tissue to other marvel uh, movies in the cinematic universe. Uh, it's a it's a great showcase for Scarlett Johansson and Florence Pugh. I enjoyed it much more this time, and I'm finding that MCU movies, if they're good at anything, repeat viewings. Hmm, not bad. Yeah, it's still not my favorite by any long stretch of the imagination. But I don't know. I kind of liked it better than Dark World, my second and third time. Thor Dark World. I, th I think that's one of the weaker Marvel movies. So, uh, yeah, Black Widow. Give it a second shot and see what you think. I'm Scott Hamilton. I'm Rockfile. My links are below. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen to this podcast. There's more coming every even-numbered day. Odd numbers promote the next day. Even, they come out at 8 a.m. Eastern. Thank you for listening. <laughs>